Hey guys, I have another backtrack tutorial for you today. This is more of a demonstration. I want to kind of demonstrate how unsecure public Wi-Fi hotspots are. For example, Starbucks or McDonald's or the airport, anywhere that offers free public Wi-Fi. I want to show you how somebody like myself could simply go to Starbucks, hook up to the Wi-Fi hotspot, and begin stealing usernames and passwords and all kinds of other data from any other user who's hooked up to that same network. So. What I'm going to actually do for this tutorial is I'm going to create a fake access point, a free Wi-Fi hotspot, and I'm going to connect a victim machine to it. So if I were at Starbucks, I would create this access point. I would call it Starbucks Wi-Fi, and then what I would do is I would send a deauthentication attack to the actual Starbucks hotspot to kick everybody off of it, to disconnect them. And then when they want to reconnect, they're going to see my Wi-Fi hotspot at the top of the list. And it's going to be titled Starbucks or McDonald's or whatever. And they're going to connect to it, none the wiser. So to do that, I'm going to use a program called EasyCreds. And I've already went into my prerequisites and configurations and done everything I need to do. I will show you that in the next tutorial, how to configure everything. It's very, very simple. So I'm going to choose option three for a fake AP attack. And then I'm going to choose option one for a static AP attack. And I'm going to specify uh, where I want to save all of this data that I collect. So I'm going to save it right here to my desktop and it's going to create a file right there in a second. I'm not going to include a sidejacking attack. That is something I'll discuss in a future tutorial. Now what I need to do is specify the interface that I'm using to connect to the internet. I do have internet access right now. I am actually tethered to my iPhone. I'm using an iPhone 4 on iOS 5. So I'm using my 3G internet right now. So I can do this anywhere I have 3G internet, which is most places. So that is actually going to be ETH1. You would type whatever uh, the name of whatever device is connected to the internet. And then for my wireless interface name, which is the interface that's going to broadcast the fake access point and allow clients to connect to us, I'm using WLAN 2, which is the alpha USB network adapter and I love it. I encourage you guys to, to purchase it. It's inexpensive and it works great. So now the ESSID, which is the name of the access point, I'm going to call it Starbucks. I'm just going to call it Starbucks. Okay. You can call it whatever you want. Channel I want to broadcast on. I'm going to choose six. It's a very common channel. Six and 11 are good channels to use. So now once you've done that, it's going to ask me it's going to put my wireless interface into monitor mode and it's going to tell me to specify the monitor interface which is now mon zero so you use that now the tunnel interface is something I created in one of those configuration files earlier and I titled it AT0 as the example and then do you have a populated DHCPD dot configuration file to use the answer to that is no uh, I could make one and what that does is it allows me to say hey I want you to assign specific IP addresses to people who connect to our access point or I want the access point to automatically time out or shut down after so long different things but we're gonna say no we're gonna allow easy creds to configure that for us now the network range for your tunnel interface we're gonna use 192.168.0.0 forward slash 24 and that gives a very large span of uh, IP addresses that we can assign so we're gonna press enter there and now it's asking to enter the IP address for the DNS server the example here is 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 which is Google's DNS server and we're gonna use that because it works great now here is going to start up Airbase tag ng and about five other applications we're gonna have URL snarf we're gonna have Edercap and I think we're going to be using DSNF, uh, DMESG, a couple different things. So now I'm going to refer over to my victim computer. I'm going to start a screencast on that so I can show you what's happening on both computers. The host computer, which is the one you're viewing now, and then the victim computer, which I'm going to start connecting. So everything's up and running there. I'm going to start my screencast on my victim computer. <coughs> and you can see here, I'm referring to my victim computer, which is an iMac running Mac OS X 10.6. I don't have internet connection, so I'm going to pull it up. I just made one called Star Starbucks Wi-Fi, but remember, we created one now called Starbucks. So there it is right here. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to connect to Starbucks. And if you look up here, you'll see my Wi-Fi is connecting. And as soon as it's connected, 
there it is. Now you see down here, you look in the first window at Airbase TAC NG, you see a client has connected. That is my victim computer. It shows their MAC address and it tells me, hey, it's associated with Starbucks. I can create multiple access points, so that's why it specifies what ESSID they're connected to. Now down in EdderCap, it shows their IP address and shows that, hey, they requested a connection and it's been successful. And then down here in URL snarf, this is where some interesting things are going to happen. So let's refer to the victim computer, and we're going to open Firefox, and I'm going to go to let's go to www.yahoo.com, and remember we are on 3G, so it's a little bit slower. And we're going to go to mail, just like most people do who want to connect to their mail. And it doesn't matter how they get there, where they're coming from. So if you refer to my host computer, you're going to see right down here, it shows that they are accessing Yahoo. And now they're going to be typing in their username and password. So we're actually going to use an uh, email I created for this tutorial, which is, uh, I think it's this, <laughs> hackthis.chris at yahoo.com. And then I'm going to use a fake password. I'm going to say, I was, oops, I was hacked, one, two, three, nine, eight, seven, something else. I accidentally hit another key. But anyways, let's sign in. Now refer right down here, and you will see user hackthis.chris at yahoo.com. Password, I was hacked, one, two, three, nine, eight, six, seven. So it just shows you that, hey, your password is not encrypted. It's, it's not safe. It can be stolen very easily. This is a very simple thing to do. So if I was at Starbucks right now and I got everybody kicked off of their network, they connect to mine and this is what happens. Or I could simply connect to Starbucks Wi-Fi directly and start uh, stealing the same data. I don't even need them to be connected to a fake access point that I've created. And it's important though that your access point has internet access. That's why I'm tethering my iPhone. Because if you don't offer them internet, they can't go anywhere to enter usernames and passwords. But if you connect directly to Starbucks, then obviously that's fine too. But it's easier to trace to you. So that's why most people don't do that. They send a de-authentication attack to lure people to their fake access point. So now let's go to Wells Fargo. And I'll show you here how easy it is to steal banking information. I'm not going to use real information. I'm just going to type Chris Bank. And I'm going to type a password. What do you want it to be? Yahoo at some different symbols. J-O blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just to show you, hey, it doesn't matter what your password is. It can be stolen. Look, there it is. There's username, Chris Bank, password, Yahoo at pound symbol, money symbol, or dollar sign, and then a bunch of random letters. So it doesn't matter how complex your password is, it's just going to be taken. So that's it. That's how, that's how a fake access point works, and that's why public hotspots are not safe, and I do not recommend you ever, ever use a public access point to do online banking or even checking your email, Facebook accounts, anything that requires a username and password, or anything that has sensitive data. I can sniff out a lot of other data besides just usernames and passwords. I can take pictures. I can, do, I can do a lot of different things. So it's not safe. Be very careful. Always be aware of who's around you and what you're doing. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. In the next part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure those files so you can set up the same attack.